Hey everybody, how are y'all? My name's Kyle, for those of y'all who haven't met me. I have the, I'm a sales guy here. My card says plenty consultant, but apparently after talking to some franchisees, I'm a sales guy. I'm a mouthpiece. I'm the guy that uh, people come to see the beard and learn more about you build it. <laughs> um, I'm going over new, new sales calls and uh, sales archive calls, telephones. Um, everyone has their own opinion. Every, all the moving parts of our company are all very, very important. Construction consultants, bidding, everything is important. But in my opinion, the most important part of this company is a telephone. Hands down. If we don't navigate the telephone properly, nobody gets in here, we don't sign contracts, we don't build houses. How do you effectively manage your telephones? That's what I'm going to go over today. How do they navigate it? Keegan went into the planning starts aspect of it. I'm going to go down because we have our system here. We have a system that works very good. I have my own way of doing it. Philip has his own way of doing it. Keegan does. Are they wrong or right? We all have our own form. We live by these guidelines and they work. What's your main goal on any sales call? To sell the presentation, hands down. That's how we're formatted. We can't sell anything to anybody until we get them in for a presentation. That's your number one goal, hands down, number one goal. What are you really selling? At first, you're selling yourself, right? If you talk to anybody on the phone and you don't like them, are you gonna come meet with them? Probably not. How are you selling your presentation? Bob said something the other day to me that stuck. He said, if you're not calling and you don't have a smile on your face when you're calling, Put the phone down, probably get in your truck and go home. Something, if you're off, don't get on the phone that day. You have to have a mindset. It's like calling, when I get off work, I call my girlfriend and I say, I start talking. She goes, what's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong. Was it what I said? No, it wasn't what I said. It was the tone of my voice. She could tell I was upset. So you might sit down on your telephone and be like, man, I'm not booking any appointments. Well, would you want to talk to you that day? It's all about your mindset, it's all about how you are. If you don't have a smile on your face, don't pick up the phone. In order to be successful in this company, as a sales guy at anything, you have to be organized and work the schedule. Um, Keegan and I couldn't be different in the way that we organize. Hands down, we're like night and day. We both get the job done. Philip, he has his own methods. I use the calendar on planning starts to organize my calls. He has a notebook. How, it doesn't matter. Just how are you organized and being efficient on the phones? I'm telling you guys, it's all about that, 100%. I utilize the calendar. It's an extremely useful tool. I set reminders after I make a phone call. Uh, I live by it, um, and it works for me. I'm very systematic in my approach. Keegan can have 10 papers on his desk. He does the same thing I do. It's just different. You're just organized. I'm, not I'm just organized, like, yeah. Like, yeah. That's the difference. <laughs> But hey, guess what? What's Bob care about? We're getting people in the door. We're signing and we're building houses. He pays a lot of money for leads, guys. Everybody pays money for leads. If they get to my computer, I pick up the phone and I screw them up, that's on me. You gotta manage your telephone calls. We've set some rules to live by. We're gonna kinda unveil this. Now, I will disclaim this. This is a, these are minimums. But if you do these things, Keegan and I have kind of developed this method. Phillip's using it. Um, this is stuff to kind of go by. Write these down, whatever. They work. Number one, rules to live by on a new lead call schedule. You need to make a minimum of 15 calls an hour. Now, any sales guy that gets busy and go, oh, that's tough, man. We've got presentations. We've got all this stuff coming in. This is in a week's, week's time, daily breakdown. You need to make 15 calls an hour. Out of those 15 calls an hour, you need to schedule a minimum of 3.5% of your calls. That's one presentation every two hours on a minimum production level. Number three, 60% Minimum of 6% of your scheduled appointments will actually show up to the presentation. Fact. Be sure to call the day before. Make sure you're doing your follow-ups. Make sure you're, whoever, however you do it, whether you do it yourself, whether you have somebody do it, 60% minimum will actually show up for the presentation. 
What's the breakdown? For every 10 leads, four will actually be scheduled. You'll sign one of those. These are minimums. What's the breakdown? So how's this look? In total, you need to make 50 calls a day. 50 calls a day, minimum. We stay late on Tuesdays. We don't know how you schedule it. Make sure you get it in. You get busy, that's on you. Make sure, as you look back at the week, that you're averaging at least 50 calls a day. That's 250 calls a week. When you pull your report, I live off those reports too. You get in there and see your daily and weekly production levels. It's 250 calls a week. Out of those 250 calls, we need to schedule 3.5% of them. What's that number? To come in for a presentation. That number actually comes out to be 8.75, so what is that? That's nine presentations a week. Out of those nine, you're going to make sure five of them actually show up. So you need to, on minimum, make sure you're presenting as a sales guy five people a week. If you're good and you're closing the way you should, that's 20 presentations a month, basic math. If you're just barely cutting it and you're just doing, you're really not doing that well, you should sign five of those. Five to six. If you're getting the money you need, you're booking all that stuff, you can survive on those numbers. Am I wrong? No, you're right. Those are standard. These are minimums. If you ask Bob, he'll say, you'd be making 110 a day. My CEO says it's 150. Yeah. These are not Bob's. <laughs> I, get, I give you minimums because guess what? We're sales guys and we live in this world every day. Other days, you look back and you've had four presentations and you go, oh, I only made six calls today. Uh-oh. What's my Tuesday look like? What's my Wednesday look like? Guess what? I may be here till 8 o'clock at night. You need to make sure that you're doing this. I'm just telling you it works, guys. I, I promise you it works. Those are the numbers breaking down on your bare minimum. If you're closing more and you're a rock star, it's easy to get lazy if you're doing well. But all of a sudden, you look and you just take two weeks off. Guess what? Your next month's not going to be very fun. And guess what? Construction consultants suffer for it. Your bidding coordinator suffers for it. We all suffer for it. Work your numbers. I pulled my production levels for the last week. I pulled Keegan's for the last week. We were averaging, I averaged about 51, point, 51 calls. He has a little less. He's a little busier than I am at times for his duties. I scheduled 17 presentations in one week. He had about 11. I signed four last week. I live by these numbers. I'm very systematic in what I do. I'm not saying that my way is different, your way is different. Create a system and stick with it. Organization equals success. If you're ever having a problem with, oh man, why are my numbers where they should be? Why am I not getting presentations? Keegan and I laugh a lot. Or Philip, we use each other. We come in and say, man, I'm having trouble with my new leads. I only got a hold of three of them. I'm scared. What am I doing wrong? Is my voicemail, does my voicemail suck? Am I pretty? Ha ha, we laughing. <laughs> Tell me I'm enough, Keegan. Um, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. It's a big part of it. I, I walk in and make you pretty. Um, <laughs> but we laugh about it. It's so easy to get in your head, to get in your box. I mean, it is. I'm like, oh man, all right. And then you start struggling, and then you start cutting corners. If you, if you just create a system where you can hold yourself accountable, You'll be successful, 100%. Go ahead. Just little things about what do you find that works for you? Do you use a headset so you can walk around and be animated and smile and move versus sit good, good point. I have, a, I, have a, uh, I have a 20 call. I have a 20 call number. If I haven't got a hold of somebody in 20 calls and I've left 20 voicemails or a guy hung, picked up the phone, I heard ruffling, and I, it hung up, subconsciously that does something to you. <sighs> If I'm sitting at my desk for too long, I'll get up. I've got a putting green in my office. I'll get up and putt. 
I'll go in and give Keegan a hard time. I'll, you got to get up and move around. Go outside, get you some fresh air for five minutes, come back, pick up the phone. Um, it's, you can't just sit at your desk for three hours because all of a sudden the blood's outside your head, it's in your feet, you just feel horrible. You've got to fall asleep. Get up, move around. Because guess what? The guy that gets, if I make 30 phone calls in a row and I don't get hold of somebody and when I pick it up, I'm really subconsciously in a bad mood. Guess what? That's not going to go very well. So have those little systems, have those little set of timer on your watch. Maybe your, maybe your Apple watch tells you to get up, move around. Put a smile on your face, whatever. I write stuff on my desk to remind me to do things. Um, but just hold yourself accountable. Whatever your system is, work it. Um, but if you're not having, if you're having, back to that, if you're, not, if you're having problems with your production levels, utilize, I mean, I'm spoiled here because I have, I have Bob, I have Keegan, I have a lot of successful people around that I go, hey, help me. What am I doing wrong? Reach out to us. If you're a sales guy anywhere, call us, call. Use somebody to help you get out of your batting slump. Um, I will say this, always be closing, always be closing. I call with one purpose in mind, to get them in here. It's so easy, any sales guys made calls for whatever reason, they, they treat you like a subcontractor. Because guess what, they might have been talking to subcontractors. Guess what, I'm not a subcontractor. I'm not gonna give you my, I'm not gonna give you my playbook on the phone. There's a way to dance around that. You have to give them enough. You have to ask the right questions to get them here. But don't tell them the ingredients to the KFC recipe on the phone. Get them in here so we can do, respect your process. Um, ask leading questions. Ask the right questions. Guess what? I'm taking you somewhere. Yeah, you can build rapport. And you've always got that type A personality picks up the phone and it's like, What's your, you know, what's your square footage? What do you cost per square foot? Well, sir, there's a lot of variables to that. I go through my elevator script, and I've got some I'm going to hand you guys out. I didn't hand them out before for time's sake, but I've got our elevator script if you need a sample one. Memorize it, make it your own. Keegan couldn't sell differently from me. Philip couldn't sell differently. I have a very, I'm a process guy. Keegan's charisma. People come in, almost give him a hug before a presentation. Keegan! And people are like, I'm here to see Mr. Richard. You know? <laughs> Our phone calls went very differently. Guess what? Our signings are right there. It's the same deal. It's the same deal. How do you sell on the phone? My, my, mine works. Phillips works. Keegan's works. They're different. But at any point you stop doing that or you get in the funk, you get in your head, guess what? Your, your production levels will show. They will. Mix it up. Um, for any beginner sales, if you, if you are a beginner sales guy or if you're training a beginner sales guy, have them write it down. Early on, my first, my first month, you know, you'll think you'll have it. You'll go through all these sales trainings. You'll do all this stuff, and then you get on the phone, you'll lock up. Uh, what do we do? You know, um, write it down. Have a, have a system where you can read um, just like this. I know Bob had it for years right above his desk. What do we do? So you can go back and hit the core points. Because guess what? What are you trying to do? You're trying to get them in here. So we can do what we do. Um, requirements of a sales call. Got a few bullet points here. Number one, what is it? Ask for a presentation. You'll get every objection in the world. Oh, I got to talk to my wife. Well, yeah, you're smart. You probably should. But can I pencil you? <laughs> <laughs> that's, why I'm not, that's why I'm not married anymore. I didn't ask. <laughs> uh, that's the number one objection. I, wouldn't you say? Yeah. All right, well, well I, I got to talk to my wife. Well, yeah, I know that. But... Can I pencil you in for a time? That's Bob's big thing. I use it a lot. Let me pencil you in. That's cool. If we have to change it, but I'm busy, you're busy, but let me just kind of tentatively write something down. Let's pencil you. Ask for the presentation. Ask questions. You got to invest. That's really what we do in the first 45 minutes of our presentation is invest, but ask the right questions to get them, to get them in for the presentation. Oh, yeah, what size of home are you building? What style do you have? Do you have land? Do you own it? Do you sell a house? What, you know... You do that kind of stuff and then say, guess what? And then they start asking you questions. Well, you got to come see me to get the rest. Bait and switch. It works. Um, show them that you care. They got to like you. In order to come talk to you, I said that numerous times. Zig Ziglar, it's one of my favorite quotes. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. That's a fact. They don't, no one wants to talk to a narcissistic person who is all about talking about themselves. Talk to them, get them to know you a little bit, and say, I want to come talk to this kid. Seems like he's got something going on. 
What is you build it? Um, run the elevator script. Worst case scenario, it's your foundation. Have it, have it there. Give them just enough to get them in. If you follow these steps properly, you ask the right questions, you follow all the sales videos that Bob's laid out. If you follow Bob's plan, and I, I do it the best I can systematically, because for me it works. We're similar in the way that we sell. Um, Keegan has his own way that works for somebody who has his personality. It works. Philip has more of a soft kind of presentation. And people feel like they can talk to him. Make it work for you. I'm a system. I sell a system. I sit back in my chair and I say, if I, at this point, if I have not explained everything, I've failed. Because I've taken, I've, I've started from point one to the very end, taking you somewhere. And it started what? When I picked up the phone. I'm taking you to a signing the, the first 30 seconds I talk to you. I'm taking you somewhere. Everyone's a little different. How do we get there? I'm still taking you somewhere. I average over 200 calls a week, even on my busiest. Like I said last week, I had like 248. Keegan was a little 10 or 20 less than that. He's, he's a sales manager. He's got a lot going on. Um, our presentation, like I said, we get to the same place. Follow your system. Follow this. You'll be successful. If you don't dial, you die. Fact. Pick up the phone. Um, I'm also going to give you guys, too, for your, I didn't, like I said, I didn't hand them out before. I've got our Oklahoma call schedule. It's very systematic. Um, I use the calendar. Um, people argue, oh, well, after a presentation, if they don't sign, how often do you follow up? We have a system that we follow. Um, I utilize text messages and emails. Keegan doesn't do either of those. It still works for him. Sometimes people, it's just my style. I don't want to feel invasive. My personality is not that aggressive. I still have great production levels. I use a different system than he does. It works. Find what it works for you. Make this happen. Uh, if, you start, if you start calling 75, 80 a week, like I, sh I need to get back to, I did early, I had more people than I had time for. If, you, if your presentations are low, I promise you it goes back to your phone calls. We've looked at it time and time again. Well, why did, why did I only get four last week? Oh, I only made 160 phone calls that week. When I was, when I was averaging 350 to 400 a week, I didn't have time for all of them. Follow the system. Look at your phone calls. Maybe you have a horrible voicemail. I went through a time where I was being real short with people on the voicemails because I was busy. I wouldn't get people to call me back. They're like, yeah, he... I went back and listened to my voicemail. I'm like, oh, makes sense. So look at all those things. You can look at our call schedule. You can look at it, make it your own, but there's, there's that. Um, this 250 as well um, is also incorporating the sales archives. Um, I was going to pull it up. Keegan kind of shows you how that works, so I, don't, I feel like it's a little redundant to do that. But the first two presentations and really the first two signings I ever had with this company were out of sales archives. <sighs> Um, you got to put on your big boy pants to get in there sometimes because some people are upset. What, read the call notes. <laughs> read the call notes. Um, but I always just play the whole I'm new dumb card. You could be at this company for 10 years, play the I'm new dumb card. Um, I just, yeah, I heard that you went with the builder and that you hated so-and-so, but I'm not him. <laughs> <laughs> Talk, just talk to me. What's up? Talk to me. <laughs> it says on here you hate, you build it 10 times. Guess what? I got one of those coming for a presentation. Just because I, I take it as a challenge. I like to win. I'm an avid golfer. For every ball I shanked into the trees, what, should I quit playing golf? No. Um, utilize. If your leads are short one week, I hop in sales archives because I'm like, yeah, I need to get cussed at maybe. Or maybe I need to. You're riding too high. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get humble? He's like, you're only getting archive calls this week. No, but for real, there are gems in there. There really are. Uh, I'm guilty of it. I'm sure Keegan would admit to it. Philip would admit to it. Some days you get mad at a client. And you're like, oh man, forget him. Archives. I'm tired of them. Another another perspective picks them up, and they like him. Somebody might love Philip and hate me. I don't know. I mean. You can get people out of archives in time to time. So I want to disclaim that those 250 are not just new leads. You're like, well, I can't. 
You know, sometimes unsuccessful sales people will look and go, oh, it's back to the leads. It's the number one excuse. The leads are horrible. I disagree. There's been some people who have been successful in this company that have had hardly no leads. Um, just you have to work these numbers, you guys will be successful. Um, he kind of went through the archives too. You guys can pull from that, from that, you can transfer the lead after the, when you're in the sale, make a, make a call screen, comes up, you can transfer them over there or pull them from. If you pull one out of sales archives, click on transfer over and put it in your name, they're there. Um, I just wanted you guys to know this is incredibly important. Um, I'm close on time. I could talk about calls all day because honestly, I, I love the phones. I love them. If somebody loves you or hates you, it's hang up the phone and start over. I mean, Sandra knows all about it. If you just pick it up and have a short memory, have a short memory. If you get in your box over a bad phone call, you're going to have a tough time doing anything in this industry. Have a short memory, have a smile on your face. Um, that, that really resonated when Bob told me that. It's all about your perspective. Even if you're, even if you're not, make yourself. And if not, take 30 minutes to get back to the phones. I probably shouldn't call somebody. Another thing Bob told me the other day that really resonates. If you haven't just walked out of a signing, when's the best time to call? When you're hot. When you were on cloud nine and you're confident, that's the time to go make your, go dive into your new leads. Because guess what? This, I'm happy and guess what? I'm the you build a king right now. Or you think that. Call with a smile on your face. Be diligent with your numbers. These are minimums. But I promise you, I've lived by it. Our numbers show it. If you stick with these, you'll be successful. Yeah, y'all have any questions? Sales calls? Sales archives? Thank you. Oh, go ahead. We have one. We have one. We have one. Uh, you see text in every place. Say that again. Do you see text in every place in the sales call? It's a good point. And, you know, um, traditionally I would say no because it's you don't get to talk to them. The last, I'd say four out of the last ten presentations I scheduled, some people just don't like confrontation. They don't like to talk. And it's so busy. Or I'm always at work. The people are always, okay, oh, I work all the time. I live on texts or emails. I send a lot of emails too, but I like the texting from a perspective. I, I do want to talk to you though. I'll usually text them and say, hey, look, I know you're busy, but I got a few things I want to run through you. I do a lot of that. Yep, absolutely. The one thing I see on text is you got to get to the point. 100%. And they got to get to the point back. I've got a few clients that just want this, yep. they won't pick up the phone, I'll text them and it's right back. I, they cut right to the chase. I established that early in a new lead especially. Come some people are like, oh well I'm I'm busy, but I prefer texts. Okay. Guess what? What are we trying to do though? We're trying to sell the presentation. I like it post presentation too. I like it. Yeah, I like it post presentation as well, but I just follow up that way. I was so, giving him a man. I wasn't trying to. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is he going to chuck me? What did I say? <laughs> what did I say? Well, Joe Wall Street, there's always that person back. I go, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, yeah. Would it not be feasible to, before you archive some, that some of your assumptions with an archive uh, client, potential client, there was enough interest there that they got your irritated or whatever? Would it not be feasible maybe to break them through to the other salesman? I. I don't think so because we wear them slick. By the time, if, if I, if, if, if they don't like one of us three because I believe that Bob has trained us properly, they weren't doing business with us in the first place. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that. They might need some time to do a lot. Yeah, by the time that we're done with them, yeah. it takes a lot for me to be done with you and put you in archives. Yeah, yeah, it uh, does. And yeah. I will say this, just as real quick, and then we'll close that full schedule yep. lunch. The kicker to text, the kicker to emails is twofold. Number one, if you are a self-driven person or an owner, beware lying to yourself. Beware of letting, because if you will let yourself take the easier path, you're going to take the easier path. And it's kind of like how we put on weight. Well, you know, I've got this little shoulder injury. All of a sudden, hey, you, know, you lied to yourself to avoid going to the gym and you got chubby. You lied to yourself and go the easy way. If you teach these skill sets, and they're very important, is texting have, matter? Does that have value? Hell yeah, it does. It's fantastic. It absolutely does. Do emails? Hell yeah. There's just there's people that respond differently.
there's ways to get there, and they're huge. The problem with teaching it, especially when you start getting employees, is you start getting the guy that gets scared, wants to take the easy way, figures out that they can just lie to you on numbers, like, oh, yeah, I made 100 re Well, you get there, and you're like, well, how is that possible? How could you do this, and this is what we got out? I mean, you can't plant properly 100 seeds and not get 25 plants. So you did it. You said you did it. You're there, and I have one plant. Wow, something's wrong. So you're trying to touch the person first. You know, let's pay a fortune. Let's do a soil study. Nope, soil's good. Wow, maybe we have a bad batch of seeds. Let's send them off. You have to check. Guess what? 100% of the time, your soil's good, your water's good, your fertilizer's good, your seed's good, your salesperson's lying to you. And if you teach them that, when you start digging into it, what they did was, well, emails worked so well, and I just sent 100 emails. You know why? Because sending 100 emails took five minutes. I spent the rest of the day shopping on eBay. So be very careful of creating a format that has too much weight in the area where it's easy to manipulate and lie to yourself or to be lied to and have the discipline, which is why I have Trey on my stuff because I don't, to go back and check and measure those things on a constant basis if you are doing so. That's probably too much, but it is why when we're teaching, we try to soften a little bit. You have to say, I'm happy to share an Excel file and give you an example of what we do with all of our remotes. We do uh, leads, presentations, appointments, and then uh, how many people actually sh actually showed up for the presentation, because that could be a kink in your bottleneck as well. If you have 15 presentations scheduled that week and two came in, there's probably something broken with your follow-up system or the, what you identify as a potential need for a presentation. And then we show notes, expected closing dates, how we're going to strategize to get them in, and potentially condense down that lead cycle to get them to sign that engagement letter or contract. And if you guys want an example, I am happy to share all of it with you and show you. Just all right, you know. and we've kept you all too long. Try to be back by 1.30 if you can. For a few minutes, I think that's okay.